Day 259. Today there is a lot of news. The Ukrainians finally launched their next wave of their counteroffensive operation in the Kherson region. Russian authorities have publicly announced withdrawal from Kherson, and the Russian appointed head of Kherson died in a car accident. The Ukrainians have changed the axis of advance completely, and this time they started from storming Snehurivka. The change of axis was a very clever decision, and the reason behind this decision lies in the change of the conditions on the battlefield. Firstly, the Russians have been withdrawing and building fallback positions. This means that the Russians did not plan to defend their positions, but just hold Ukrainian attacks and drag them into artillery fire pockets, while the Russians methodically execute their tactical retreat plan with minimal losses. This meant that the previous plan of storming the northern positions became irrelevant and disadvantageous. That is why the Ukrainians took time to let the situation fully develop, evaluate the new setting and decide on the course of action. This is the main reason behind such a long pause. After the situation stabilized and the Ukrainians decided on the course of action, they started rapidly relocating their troops and machinery from deep reserves closer to the front. Those who are watching my channel on a regular basis might recall that around three weeks ago, Russian sources reported about the relocation of Ukrainian troops to the north of Mykolaiv and also to Krivy Rih. Their conclusion was that the Ukrainians were preparing a secondary defense line to stop the Russian counteroffensive. However, in reality, the Ukrainians made this decision to keep their forces mobile and be ready to change axis of advance rapidly. And they made the right decision because the Ukrainians made the attack apparent on a very short notice, and as you will see, it paid off. On the 8th November, they rapidly increased the concentration of forces in the area of Snehurivka, and on the next day, they already launched a full-scale attack. As you can see, Snehurivka consists of three semi-separate parts – the northern, central and western. That is why the Ukrainians opened three lines of attack. The first one was launched towards the northern part of the town, which is cut off from the rest by a highway and a railway. The second one was launched towards the central part from the northeast. And the third attack was launched towards the western part of the town. The third attack actually turned out the most successful, because the Ukrainians managed to immediately breach the primary line of defense, drive through the whole town and establish their positions in the southern part of the town. This means that the Ukrainians established total fire control over the main retreat road. This is very clever because it means that the Russians would have to use highly inconvenient roads on the eastern bank of the Inholets River, which would significantly slow down the retreat operation they so carefully tried to prepare. And this obviously buys the Ukrainians more time to develop their offensive further before the Russians retreat to their next defense line or fall back position. In the meantime, the Ukrainians managed to clear the northern part of Snehurivka completely. The Russians understood hopelessness of their situation and started rapidly retreating. In order to give themselves a chance, they retreated in thrust during artillery and aviation strikes. So the Russians fought and waited for air support, air support pinned down the Ukrainians, and a group of Russians retreated. Today the process was completed, and after the last convoy departed, the Russians blew up the bridge. With that, the liberation of Snehurivka was completed. Since Snehurivka is the only northern stronghold, its fall caused a chain reaction. The Ukrainians have already entered other settlements such as Kalinevske. Shortly after the Ukrainians launched their attack towards Snehurivka, they also assaulted settlements along the southern part of the front line, such as Oleksandrivka, Pravdina and Ternovipode. After the Russian Ministry of Defense announced the retreat, the Russians started leaving their positions. A few hours ago, videos emerged of the Ukrainians walking inside Pravdina. Lastly, the Ukrainians launched a reconnaissance attack from Duchany. There is not much information available, probably because it was a limited attack, but it is still a very important indicator of the next area of Ukrainian advances. Overall, the front line once again started to collapse. Despite the fact that the Ukrainian officials say that the Russians will not leave Kherson, I still think that there is a 90% chance that they will. In any case, there will be no need for regional government. Maybe that is why the Russian appointed head of Kherson, who was being evacuated from the town, 
didn't make it and died in a car accident. If you're against the invasion of Ukraine and you want to support the work that I'm doing, consider making a purchase in the online store UA Supporter. Here you can find a lot of products with Ukrainian symbols to not only show your support for this channel, but also for Ukraine. The link to the online store is in the description. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next report.